Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to talk about over-the-counter hearing aids. We're going to get into a couple of topics. I'm looking over here my notes, and we're talking about the dangers and the prescriptive problems in there. We're going to be talking about the perceived mild to moderate hearing loss. We're going to talk about how the FDA works and the, and the regulations that are in there. We're going to talk about Congress, Senate issues. We're going to talk about why the agencies do what they do and the manufacturers and how all of them actually are, are really failing you in this way. And when I show you how this all, all works and how hearing aids actually set up here. So let me kind of uh, move around here. So I have to like kind of move the screen a little bit as we go. So makes sense. Sorry, I'm having to do this and I'm not as good as some people are at this, this screen here. So let me pull that down just a hair. Okay. So I want to kind of um, I show you on the screen what I look. I mean, th this is it, this isn't perfect close to my hearing, but this is really, really close to what my hearing is. This is actually a patient I pulled um, the other day. My hearing is a little bit better than this. I mean, I'm a little bit better up in the higher pitches, but let me explain what, what an audiogram is, okay? So we go from the lowest pitches down here, okay, up to the highest pitches over here. What are pitches, okay, the, or frequencies? <clears throat> so pitches are the vowel type sounds tend to congregate on the lower pitch region versus the consonant type sounds uh, congregate on the higher pitch regions, okay? From the softest sounds over on this side down to the loudest sounds of, uh, down on this side of the screen, okay? So red marks are for the right ear, <coughs> excuse me, blue marks are for your left ear. It's got some cough issues, I'm still dealing with some issues. Okay, so I really want you to kind of watch. You see that little um, arrow, I mean, that, that dotted line there? That's normal hearing. So let me give you an example. My wife, when I first, we, we've been married just over 30 years. When I first tested her hearing, she was 100% perfect. Now today, she is so close to borderline normal, it's not funny. Well, we always get worse, you know, as we get as we grow older. That's just what happens, okay? <clears throat> my hearing used to be 100% perfect too. And, you know, through a lots of other issues, you know, my hearing's a little bit, or some of my marks are down here. But this is a patient of mine that just um, purchased some hearing aids just the other day. So that's why I kind of pulled this kind of thing out here. So <clears throat> Kurt got some help with his hearing. And so the right, red for the right ear, blue for the left ear. Okay, so he... What I want you to kind of see here is that everything below the line is stuff that he can hear. Everything above the line is things that he cannot hear, okay, on a consistent basis. It doesn't mean that he never hears the shh sound, but he's not hearing it consistently on a, on a, on a normal basis. Now, <coughs> you make it louder. Sorry, you make it loud enough, of course, he's going to hear that, okay? But on a normal basis, he's not necessarily going to hear it. Now, women's voices are tend to be in higher pitch range than men's voices, but I can come up with a, uh, with a woman's voice who has a more baritone kind of sound overall to her, okay? So music sounds tend to be louder, and, you know, a bird sound tend to be softer. That's just the tend to kind of be. Now, 0 to 25 is normal range. Mild, mild hearing loss in the clinical standard is 25 to 40 decibels. Moderate, 40 to 50, 55 decibels. Moderately severe, uh, 55 to 70. 70 to, to 90 is severe. And 90 and beyond is the profound hearing range. Now, <clears throat> to hit our first statement on the over-the-counter hearing aids and the problem that I got so peeved about that um, took me for, you know, I mean, I, I just got so mad about this, it wasn't even funny, is the perceived mild to moderate hearing loss. 
Now, first off, I I'm showing you a actual hearing loss of a patient I fit with hearing aids just the other day. A perceived mild to moderate hearing loss. Well, this guy actually has a actual mild <clears throat> to moderate hearing loss. Now, I'm not showing you what his bone marks here are. So if, if you're an audiologist watching this or you're, you know a little bit about hearing loss, I'm not telling you if it's an inner ear hearing loss or it's an outer ear hearing loss or a middle ear hearing loss here. And see, we're going to show you some, some more information about this. We, we still don't know actually what that, that circumstance is. And here's the point. So Bose technology comes to Senator Warren, who's on the left side of the aisle, and comes to Senator Grassley on the right side of the aisle and, and brings those two together, and they come up with the over-the-counter um, conversation the over-the-counter hearing aid conversation because they wanted to have you know bipartisan relationships in the Senate to push forward a bill and then they and then they they pushed everyone on this now I remember having this conversation with numerous senators and congressmen hey listen I truly am not scared of of having this conversation with with uh, with these senators you, you understand I, I don't care what you do you have I'm all for freedom you want to get some help with your hearing? I'm cool with that. But what in God's name is perceived problems? I have no idea. Let me give you an example of, of what, what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to bring up on the screen a little bit further. We're going to flip over here. And here's some of the things. And this is National Council on Aging. This is where it gets so ridiculous when we talk about this. So what they were talking about is making hearing aids more affordable, okay? So this is what they were getting on, and, and this is even through August of 22. Well, you know, that was a long time later. October of 22 is when they finally put this thing in, into effect. <clears throat> and they, and they, they talk about some of the information. 25% of Americans have very significant hearing loss, um, have a severe enough hearing loss. Wait a second. Do you see the wording? A severe enough hearing loss to affect their daily life. Look, now I want to back up here for a second. Do you know what that means? Here's what happens for someone to have a, when someone moves into a severe hearing loss range, they stop hearing. If the marks of, of a person's hearing moves into this range, their perception of hearing becomes severe where they can't hear the person talking. So they go, oh my God, I can't hear people. Because if a person like Kurt says, well, I can't hear, I mean, he goes, I can hear you, but I don't understand you. Now, since my hearing is very similar to his, I wear hearing aids very similar to this kind of thing, okay? And, you know, so, I, I wear prescriptive hearing aids and, you know, I'm, I can understand better. If I don't have them on, when I'm, especially when I go to a restaurant, I don't understand what's happening, okay? But here's what they're saying here. The FDA final rule on OTC hearing aids, oops, sorry, sorry, uh, nearly 25% of Americans between 65 and 74 years old um, have a severe enough hearing loss to affect their daily life. What? So why didn't you answer this point. Okay, let's go down here a little bit further. <clears throat> they went off and, and consulted audiologist geri geriatric care um, specialists. They didn't talk to audiologists one tiny bit. Liars. Complete, utter liars. OTC hearing aids. Regulated by the FDA. Wait a second. They haven't been regulated. In 2016, this thing came out. And all of these idiots were, were out there shoving out their products. They've been doing this online for a long time. I've not had a problem with them. They can do whatever they wanted to out there. But they've been talking about FDA types of hearing aids. But let me show you even a deeper level of, of the lie that's been happening. The National Council on Aging, here's what they said. Levels of hearing loss covered, mild to moderate, Wait, we didn't even talk about perceived hearing loss, did we? 
we saying this is a mild to moderate. Prescriptive hearing aids, though, have mild, moderate, severe, and profound. Uh, yeah, of course they do. The average price of these over-the-counter is $1,600. Okay, that's still a very, very significant one. Well, this one is $4,600. So we're talking about President Biden is over here talking about, well, you can save $3,000. But here's what the problem I say. So what that you save $3,000? You don't have a clue if it makes it you any better because you don't have, have, a, have an idea whether or not, not that that makes a difference. And people go, you're just trying to protect your industry. Hey, listen, you want to go buy something online? You have the freedom to do whatever you do. We're not living in the United States of Iran. If you want to go buy something online, you always have had the right to do that. Go ahead. But here's my problem with this. If I am a person, and by the way, this I'm telling you the fact, I've had um, high drug, triglycerides. I've had high blood pressure. So, and, and I've, I've struggled with this over the years with my, <coughs> with my high blood pressure and high drug, triglycerides and weight. And in uh, May, I think it was, I was 233. So I'm six foot 233, it's overweight. So now today, I think I'm 203 or something like 203, 204. So that's losing 30 pounds. And I still wanna lose a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit more. Sorry. I want to lose a little bit more, but you know, we're, you know, we're trying to get on that way. So if we were to look at what my triglycerides are, um, you'll, we can do a pre and post test. What is that? It's, um, I'm going to take a blood work and when we look at the blood work before, and I just had a life insurance evaluation and that shows you know, the, the the triglycerides are coming down. See, that's a pre and post test. Wait a second. Do we have a pre-test here? No. Do we have a prescription? No. Do we have a fitting appointment? No. So do we know that, that sure, we, we say on the front end that, that we saved us, but do we know that we've actually made a difference on this? Now, this is part of the problem, guys. The FDA is supposed to be there to protect you. The Senate and Congress are supposed to be watchdogs over the FDA. And what you don't know is that some of the manufacturers, including Starkey, one of the better manufacturers out there, were screaming and yelling at, at these people. Senator Warren walked behind um, the uh, you know Starkey when they were talking on the Capitol Hill. And, and they were and around 2016, 2017, 2018. And I remember hearing the story and, and she was like looking back at them because she hadn't heard some of the information that, he, that, that they were talking about. And, and it's the same kind of stuff, guys. Um, why don't they want to listen to it? When I would talk to congressmen and senators, they had already had their mind made up. When you listen to industry insiders, when you, they would talk to the FDA, they had blank looks, they had already made their mind up. Why? Because they were all colluding together. Let me show you another one. Um, this is Lexi done by Bose. Wait a second. Do you know something about Bose that I want to show you here? Bose actually created the uh, legislation. They went out of business, boys and girls. Why did Bose go out of business this quickly? Because they tried to come up with an answer for this legislation and they've already gone out of business. Why? Because they can't do it very well. Let me show you an example. And now they have a whole bunch of reviews out there, but I'm gonna tell you something happens on reviews. The reviews are very bad. I mean, you know, they can load in tons and tons of positive reviews on all these things. But let me just give you an example of a couple reviews here, okay? Um, There's a guy, he goes, uh, these were ordered new, two enclosed batteries were not in the package, the hearing aids were encased, were packaged, left one with the right pocket, right was in the left pocket, not sure what that means, uh, none were usual plastic envelope around themselves, uh, instruction manual included, attempted to use, the sound did not amplify with the Lexi app, 
Hearing aids appeared defective, returned to ship, were reshipped to another customer. So he's basically going that he got them from some, I mean, they must have been shipped. They, they put them back into the, the thing and they basically, they reused them from someone else. Not, not an uncommon thing. Um, here's another one. Difficult to pair it to an iPhone 14. Now, we're going to actually answer that one here in a second. A thick, confusing booklet, lots of feedback, whistle. Um, box is very nice, but not worth $8.99. <clears throat> this actually is potentially coming out to your local Walgreens. Now, we just said to you before, I'm going to flip over here, that it is coming out to retail stores. Now, I want to share with you a story. And I've been talking to, uh, you know, pharmacies and pharmacists and pharmacy techs. And you have been at our pharmacies yourself. So you don't have to take my, my story for this, but you know your own stuff about this. So you go and get your, your medications. And <clears throat> sometimes, for instance, when I was going through my, my I, I was under some physician recommendations to lose the weight. And there was a shot type of therapy that we're going through, right? And at first I was like, okay, how do I do this? How long? And they're like, okay, you do this and you do, and, da, 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 and it was the sub Q and blah, blah, blah. And they were talking, they were really nice about it, you know? And it was like, oh, okay, well, then I got it. Um, and, you know, and this is what we do, right? So as we go along, <coughs> we find. We have the answer of what we're trying to accomplish. Great. Now, do you think that the pharmacist has a lot of time on his or her hand to figure out how to actually handle this issue? Um, um, let me tell you something. As an audiologist, I have to actually program phones all day long. When people come in here and actually have this exact same problem, have to pair an iPhone, um, they have a very co confusing, I mean, this is so common, it's not funny. Um, and, and, and they can't, they can't pair it. And, and we have people that come in and they got, I mean, we just had a person the other day that came in and she didn't even know that she'd been using her friend's iPhone and she hadn't really cleared out her, her friends. She'd been using her, our friend's, um, iCloud account. And she's been adding in her own own information. She she had been not been backing it up, and all. I mean, it's just like, oh my gosh, that thing isn't going to work for you. And, and so we can't even pair the phone to her and uh, for her hearing aids. And oh, like holy cow, this is so many things wrong with this this situation that's going on. They need to have that that kind of specialized care. Are you going to get it at those places? And so it doesn't matter if you went and spent. 1600 bucks you wasted 1600 bucks that's the problem that's happening the average return rate when you go to those those places those online places are around you know 40 to 60 percent on, on online or retail stores when you go to a a, a place in town you're going to see the average return rate around 10 to 15 percent why because the rejection rate is is a lot lower when you can actually get the help on something as complicated as this. Let's move on further. Sorry, let's pull this up. This is an example of a guy, and I'm going to use my glasses again. So, um, this is an example of a guy that that spends a lot of time on over-the-counter hearing aids, and so he wants to talk about. So, there's different kind of companies. They're coming up with here. They're all non-customized types of things. Okay, the Jabra, the Sony. Ergo, blah, blah, blah. And he kind of talks about self-fitted, more regulated self-fitted than the wears you go. And, and, you know, he talks about, you know, 700, 800. I mean, I hate when they do 799. Just say 800, 1,000, 850. Okay, please be straightforward. You know, battery life, 10 hours, whatever. You know, trial period, one-year warranty. Great, great, great. You know, whatever. Pro online support. I don't know what that is, uh, whatever. Um, you know, so that's a rechargeable kind of thing. Okay, great. Um, you know, so they'll, they'll tell you about what it is. So self-fitting hearing test. Uh, 
I've looked at this. This is actually not the worst hearing test out there, but it's it's still done by a patient. And did you did you make it in a really quiet room? Uh, uh, Bluetooth streaming for a phone and media. Drawbacks, well, it's $7.99 a pair. I mean, that's not the worst price out there. But did you get it done right? Um, then there's other, there's so many other things that they, they kind of go on here. Okay, so let's go over here to another one. Um, this is by the, the Food and Drug Administration, okay? More affordable um, hearing aids in the stores as in mid-October. And here's one of the things that I want to share with you related to this thing, and we'll, we'll use this. I try to do a search of this. Now, I already know the answer, and I'll, I'll give that to you in a minute. But what is the prescription for this person? So is it going to match for the capabilities? And, and I'll explain that here in just a second. And not one single online place will tell you how much will this work for me. I mean, <clears throat> if I try it, <clears throat> if I try it, will it will it actually work for my perceived mild to moderate hearing loss? Right? Does it does it tell me? I don't know. I don't I don't see that. Do you know? And we're talking about some executive orders and reduced health. He- healthcare costs and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. And I'm like, great, but you didn't tell me whether you're out there protecting me. And here's the problem. With this particular type of hearing loss, let me tell you what I actually would put on that patient. I would put on a 40 decibel prescription on that particular person. But every single one of the hearing aids that are over here, let's show you those, those particular pictures above, sorry. Not one of these hearing aids are actually at 40 decibels of, of amplification. They're actually listed no more than 25 to 30 decibels of amplification. Now, years and years and years ago, one of the very first over-the-ear types of hearing aids were called an over, you know, an OTE, okay? So it was, it didn't have a receiver in the canal or OT, um, OTC, or I'm sorry, a receiver in their ear, so RIC, but it was an OTE. So it was just a little, little tippy thing that, that happened, okay? So what happened with that one is that we could only get around 25 to 30 decibels of gain. And it could only work for a person with this kind of hearing loss or less. And I mean, we were really pushing if we had a little bit more amplification. And so if a a person had any more hearing loss or even desired more amplification, I desire much more. And see, we haven't even talked about what the desires of that person are. And everyone has a different amount of desires. I'm a musician. I actually like more sound than some people do. And that's the problem that happens. So what if someone walks in and everyone has different perceptions? You like country and I like rock and roll or whatever that might be. There's perceptions, there's responses, there's ways that some people respond to sounds. Some people hate sounds, other people don't like, I mean sounds. I have people that that love the sound of birds and other people hate the sound of birds. I have people that have all kinds of related responses to things. And and here's the problem. In, In the past, when you walk up and you go up to Walgreens and you wanna check out like little readers, you can kind of do this and go, you can test them out and see if they make a difference, right? And you go, oh, well, I can read the difference. You can do the testing yourself because you can see, oh, that's 1.5. Mm, I don't see as well with that one. 2.0, oh my gosh, I see much better with that. Do you understand? Now, <clears throat> when we flip over since i can't even tell you because you say perceived hearing loss perceived mild to moderate hearing loss i don't know what your triglycerides are i don't know what your blood pressure is what physician in the history of the world would ever prescribe something or tell you to do something without knowing what your uh, your abilities for that would be and and first off 
hearing aids have been able to be ordered online for a very long time, including a company called LloydsHearingAids.com. I mean, hey man, if you want to order hearing aids online, that's fine. But why did the FDA jump up at all the congressmen and senators who are supposed to be there to protect you? And they all have, and see, this is the thing too, that the, the, the Congress and senators and presidents, I mean, they have a 9% um, approval rating. So that's why no one cares about what they think because no one likes what they do and no one approves of what they, how they accomplish things. So, so don't listen to those idiots, okay? My point is, is that when we look at the situation, they haven't listened to your needs with this. And the FDA, who should be in line with what your needs are and saying prescriptively, they should have come to you and said, prescriptively, look at a person's hearing. And then if that person has a borderline normal hearing loss or borderline to mild hearing loss, go ahead and get any over-the-counter hearing aid you want to. They could have said even further, go ahead and just sign off on it. And you could buy anything you want to, but remember, you know, you had a hearing test. Um, you don't have to go get a prescription if you don't want to, but you, you at least checked off whether or not you wanted to get a hearing test, and you can go buy whatever you want to. But know that it might not work for you. Okay. I would have been fine with that. If they had walked in and said, at least get a prescription, I'd have, I'd have lined up behind this, this whole thing 1,000% because you would have had informed consent. But what they did is they said, perceived mild to moderate hearing loss. And to this moment, I can't answer what perceived mild to moderate hearing loss because you can't do it. The FDA can't do it. The manufacturers can't do it. The Congress and Senate can't answer that question because I'm a professional doing this for 30 years with 20,000 patients and I can't tell you what that number is. No one can tell you what that number is and they're supposed to be the ones protecting you and they don't actually want to do it. And you might think I'm just mad about the sour grapes. Guys, if you want to go spend Sorry, let me flip over to this. You want to spend $1,600. You want to spend $800. You want to spend whatever you want to spend on hearing aids. Go for it. You have the right and, and freedom to do whatever you want to. We don't live in the United States of Iran. You can choose whatever you want to, but have informed consent and know that you've been cho choosing the right kind of things but don't don't do that don't fall for this silliness that they've done and none of these people are telling you the truth that's the problem and that's why i'm going to come out and everyone is going to hate my guts for this none of the manufacturers are going to like me None of the three-letter agencies are going to like me. Of, of all of the three- and four-letter agencies, of, of the, the, you're going, but everyone else says this, it's okay for me. How about you look at the logic of this? Don't look at the authorities' figures because they're lying in this way. How about you say, what does logic tell me? Am I logically laying this out here? Or... Am I lying to you? It's your choice in the matter. You see, if you want to get your hearing tested, which you should at least find out what your hearing is. And we at here at Tulsa, I mean, here at Tulsa.com, we can check, check your hearing. You can get tested. Your hearing normally is covered by your insurance. You can find out whether or not that's what you want to do. If you don't want to come see us in Tulsa, that's fine. See your local audiologist in, the, in, in, in whatever area you live. But get your hearing evaluated before you do this kind of stuff. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Why wouldn't you do that before you go get prescriptive glasses? You'd go and get an optometrist to check your vision before you'd go off and get some prescription uh, on online, wouldn't you? Am I, am, I, am I not making logic here? Does that make sense? So guys, that's what I'm trying to say to you. This doesn't make any sense. And that's the danger of this. When they're hiding things from you, you need to be saying, 
time out. This doesn't make sense. And that's the problem. There's money flowing here and you're not part of that money flowing. And, and listen, you think it, you're saving, they're telling you you're saving 3000 bucks. Hey man, are you really wasting 1600 bucks? Are you wasting eight, nine, eight, 850? Are you wasting a thousand bucks? Cause that's what I'm hearing over and over again. Hey man, if you want to spend that kind of money, great, go for it. We actually have an over the counter device, but it's only when someone walks into our office and has better hearing loss, a better hearing range than this, because if they're in this kind of range, they, they wouldn't be able to fit with an over the counter device. That's how it works. And if they walk out and go, I'm going to do it anyway, go for it. You've made an informed choice. I am fine with it because you've made that own choice because you've done the research, the real research and the real logic choice out there. And that's all I've ever asked people to do. So I hope you like this. If you'd like to subscribe to our, our, our YouTube channel, that would be appreciated too. Thanks so much.